Okay, we are live. Hello everyone, I'm Mick Solomons, the developer of the Starting Strength app, and uh, alongside me, Starting Strength coach, Alex Koseri. How's it going, everybody? And special guest, Alex Mitchell, Starting Strength coach, joins us again. Mm -hmm. G'day, Alex. Well, hello yeah, there. Friend of the show, appearance number two. Appearance number two, yeah. So I have yeah, you guys so been... For, uh, for, no, for naming purposes, are we going to go with Alex A, Alex 1, or Mitchell, or Kasari? I'm What's telling the you, I'm telling you. Uh, Mitch Kosieri, well, although, I don't know. I don't know if I feel comfortable pronouncing your last name. I say M and K. Oh, sorry. M and K. Well, M and K, that's fine. Well, M and K all the way Alex, through. Alex M and Alex K. Okay. So um, I thought we'd start this week with the best of Reddit um, and a post from an extremely angry, <laughs> a fairly angry fella. <laughs> well, he's got every right to be angry. We broke his back. We did. Well, Ripito broke his back. Let's not... Uh, right. You know, That's true. Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't congratulate we'll, that. We'll let the lawyers deal with that. But um, <laughs> I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically, the, the headline was, Ripito's instruction of the low bar squat has kept my lower back injured for four months. A certified athletic trainer at a D1 university fixed the low bar squat in less than one set. Amazing. What have you got to say for yourselves? I, 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 I'm just going to renounce. Oh, I think I need to go back in, uh, back in time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to renounce everything I've learned. Clearly, mm -hmm. I have, yeah. I've been an error. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things where if you have a specific anecdotal example, then they completely well, win. And also, like, it's one of those things where you, you're you confabulating something that you saw on YouTube four years ago with with a, you know, professional coach. And even if, whether they're a starting strength coach or just a D1 coach or whatever kind of coach they are, if they're experienced enough, they're going to actually be able to assess what you need and not just parrot, you know, what you say on a YouTube video, which is a generalization. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd say the biggest thing, it, it's kind of the mechanic thing. Like, this guy could have been ramping up his deadlift for four months and then just had a horrible back tweak lined up from program. It's like the mechanic touched my car last. Thusly, it's his fault, no matter what, even if it's completely unrelated to what he did. Um, so well, I actually run into that a lot as a coach, is, you know, to be like, hey, you know, I, I got this some sort of weird tweaky thing after, you know, we ended up fixing our press two weeks later. And you're like, I'm sure you did. It's not my fault. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, separate issues. He goes on to say, uh, he this the coach advised uh, him not to listen to someone with a made up credential, and with shit teaching, who he's unwilling to take any criticism to become better. Amazing. <laughs> Signing off. <laughs> His name is Cheek Glider. I do appreciate. It. Yeah. Hey, Alex K. Can you um? Can you stop your downloading thing because you're breaking up a little bit? So, uh, if you yeah. Can... Um... Download stopped, man. Right. This is just the this, this is just the glory of what's in it. All right. What we're using here. All right. Well, hopefully it gets mm -hmm. a bit better because you're breaking up a little bit. Um, okay. Let, let's move on to some videos. Uh, we've got a few to get through today, so we're going to start with uh, Ville Sundman from Finland. Oops. Let me get that. Back. All right. Here we go. Ville. Ville. I should ask him how to pronounce that. His mysterious tube of of uh, gunk isn't in frame today, so. Uh... I was about to say I've seen this man squat before. Yes. I remember those Adidas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a little bit more weight on the bar this time. That's good. Yeah, he's building That's up. Good, he's, I think yeah. he I think he mentioned in his email that he's getting close to the magical two plate squat. So, uh, good on you, Ville. That's some great progress there. Yeah, I think I think we had um, I think we had this issue before, but he's still got a little bit of lagging knee slide going on. I think that was there before. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it you know it's that was a... it's. Go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say yeah, that was the error. This was the knee slide guy. Yeah, yeah. I'd say you know he does need to. I think he does need to shove his knees forward a little more. He's got he's got kind of long femur segments, so he's going to have to shove and shove, and shove uh, forward with the knees. Um, but other than that, I think that'll probably fix most of it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't I don't know how much any slot is a limiting factor here. You know, I, it's, it's definitely really one of the or, only errors present. Um, so if you're looking yeah. to fix something, that would be it. Um, but I think after that, I would probably just cue him to squat a little bit higher. You know, you, he is probably going about like an inch and a half, two inches too deep maybe on these. Um, so from there, I would say, you know, cut the depth off and you'll probably fix the knee slide. So. That could be it, yeah. Mm. Yep. Pretty solid squats, though. Good on you, Villa. Yeah, Thanks yeah. For... That's. I mean, there's very little to worry about. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's, making, he's making great progress. Um, okay, next we've got uh, Strong Moomin. That's his uh, username on the app. I think we had him on last week as well. I think he was. I think he deadlifted last time. I want to say. Yeah, he did. From this straight on angle. Yeah. yeah okay. Clip your videos, guys. Clip your videos. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. This is an interesting one. Yeah, I... Can I... Hold on. I'm trying to see if I can see the feet. I've got the loading bar. Oh, yeah, yeah. they do show up in the video. I think it might just be the... Uh... Oh, no, when, he, when not... he walks it back, he can't really see them. Anyway, this looks... Yeah, I think so it's, then... this is our old friend, uh, Ahmed Sheik Ahmed. Oh, oh yeah, this is Ahmed from last... Okay. the Sheik. Um, yeah, so I think... Uh... So I think the toe angle is a little bit too severe as in, you know, he's trying to shove the knees out, but they're just not getting out over the toes. I would widen the whole stance up. Um, I think you're relatively close to depth on some of your later reps. Um, so I would just widen the stance. I think the upper back is soft too. So I think you're kind of punching down with the chest. Think about squeezing your chest up, aiming your sternum at that blue line in front of you at the bottom of the squat. And then just be patient, sink down for another, you know, second or two at the bottom and you'll probably end up getting to depth. Um, what do you think, Alex? Yeah, I would I would agree completely with with where everything you said, but specifically with the stance, the knee, the toes are out too much, and the uh, the heels are too close together. So it's you know just widen the whole stance and bring the toe angle more a little more shallow, and uh, that'll fix most of what you're. Pro- I think that'll fix the depth problem pretty pretty mm-hmm. quickly. Okay. But um, do you think is, do you, you see in the upper back thing or am I yeah, imagining I see, that? Yeah, I see the upper back as well. Okay. I definitely, I definitely think he's soft there for sure. Mm-hmm. I, I I my question, you know, I'm. He looks like he's got the bar in the right place. It's kind of hard to tell from this angle, but I think he yeah, does. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it's it's weird because all you see is the bar and then just his head immediately next. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. yeah, I didn't. I, I, I like these a lot more than his deadlift. If I remember correctly, his deadlift was was a bit of a mess last time. So. Oh really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Thanks, uh, Ahmed. Um, keep those videos coming. We've got a couple of comments from the haters. Uh, Jeff Riggins, but my D1 coach laughing emoji. All right. That's obviously about the Reddit thing. Uh, Braden Wilson. Hey, Alex. Hey, Alex's. I'm active on the sub, uh, the subreddit, and just bought a spot at the December seminar in Wichita Falls. I'm coaching 20 hours a week at the moment and intend to opt in. Any special, any special advice you wish you would have done in prep? Ooh. You go first. Uh, I don't know if I, I uh, how much of the the secrecy or the betray, I don't want to betray any sort of covenant that I'm unaware that I was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah. make sure you know what the actual teaching progression is. Getting someone to the goal of an on model starting strength lift is not everything that they're looking for. So make sure all of your words are precise. Make sure that. You know, your your interview, your platform starts like the second that you enter. Mine actually started before then. I ran into like one of the friend of the gyms in Wichita at uh, the Walmart. I was getting groceries for the weekend. I'm pretty sure my that was my first impression. So <laughs> you make sure the first impression when you get in the door is good all the way up to the last impression. Um, yeah, but make sure I would say make sure you know the teaching progression. Uh, you will be nervous. Um, you just have to be competent while nervous. That's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be, it has to be a second, uh, like, like second nature. Right. Um, mm-hmm. that was the biggest thing because like Alex K said, you are, you are nervous. And I mean, I, by all accounts did, you know, aced each one, but I was terrified that I'd failed every single one of them. <laughs> I mean, they do not, you know, they don't tell you like, Oh, you passed. Don't worry. Yes. Too much. 
you know, yeah. it, you're, 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 you are going to be nervous 110%. So you have to be able to operate while nervous. The things that I thought that I did that helped a lot were I got, um, my coach who was Alex Beasley. She did a sort of like test seminar with one of uh, someone I provided, you know, I brought a client in who I had never seen before and I taught them to, and they got, they got a free session out of it. I paid Alex for her time and we just did sort of, she watched me go through the progression and, and critiqued me, right? I, so I got an SSC there and she's telling me everything that she thinks that I'm not doing quite, quite up to snuff. And that, the amount of nervousness that I felt there was a really good reference and it helped me prepare for the actual seminar. So if you've, if you've got the, the funds to do that and you've got a coach who's close, I'd highly recommend it. Yeah, even I would say even if the coach isn't close. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's really true. If you can find someone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't have that exact opportunity. I watched uh, an SSC coach, and then I went to one of the lifting camps, and then watched yeah. uh, actually watched Alex Beasley and Cassie Neiman coach, and then seeing them operate, that was refreshing for me. Just having yeah. you know coached my own brain for a while. Um, but um, what other notes would I say? Prepare yourself that you're probably going to fail the first time around. Yeah. Yeah. Or, uh, or just over, over, over prepare because I, yeah. I did, I, I passed the first time, but I was like, you know, I had been coaching for 60 hours a week prior, uh, mm -hmm. for a year prior to the, the seminar. I had done two of those things I said with Alex Beasley, two, two rounds of that. I had been through the coaching, the Barbell Logic Coaching Academy, and I'd been to a Barbell Logic Coaching Academy seminar. So, just to give an idea of what you need to do in order to prepare yourself effectively, that that level of preparation is is probably required. I'd say mm -hmm. something yeah, around that. You know, it, it's interesting. You know, whenever a lot of people will think it's, I don't want to say like a casual thing to obtain, but people will think it's, you know, just like oh. Good job. You got it. You know, right. you're like, <laughs> right. It's, yeah, it's, it's by quite, no it's means casual or easy or anything other than totally nerve wracking and terrifying. Yeah. I think there, I there is say, a prep course, isn't there? For coaches? Hmm? There is a prep they course. Do. Yeah. They do have one now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, Starting Strict has one as well. I haven't tried it. So that's the only reason I recommend the Barbell Logic one is because it's the only one I know. Yeah. Well, Alex, were you, uh, were you coaching like master's athletes before you took the platform? Yeah, I'd say like six months before I took the platform, I was doing pretty exclusively masters athletes because as a globo gym, those that population is just totally ignored. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So make sure that you are coaching the widest variety of people. So mm -hmm. heading into, uh, so my first one, I used very imprecise language and my own way of teaching, and I got them to the end result. So I got to the on model because I thought the goal just heading into it, not having, you know, practiced it very much was like, oh, I just need to go and teach these people how to do the thing correctly, not in the ways, you know, or in the beginning of the ways that you wanted it to happen. Um, so that was definitely that was a surprise for me. And the next thing is coach as many different populations as you can. You know, so yep. I had to coach a lot of people who I would have really never worked with in my own sphere. So, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. I, I got for my, you know, that there's always that that thing about. Oh, most coaches fail the power clean. I got a 60, he was like 66 year old guy uh, on my power clean test. And because I had worked with the master's populations, because I'd worked with so many people, like Alex K is saying, I was able to pass that, you know, where a, a lot of people might, and I myself might not have been able, been prepared for that if I hadn't worked with that population in the past. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Okay, there you go. Uh, I think we answered that pretty. Oh, I think Braden said he's actually in the prep course already. So uh, there you go. Um, nice. Let me know how it is. Yeah, I'd like to know. Yeah, let us know how mm -hmm. it's going, Braden. Um, let's keep moving along. Steve Rogers deadlift. How much weight do you reckon's on the bar? I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's Thanks, probably Andrew. two ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> It moves kind of heavy. It's a lot of kilos. Yeah, it moves kind of heavy. Now you got me looking at the plates trying to guess. The bar. Are you, oh, you must have fast forwarded the video, Alex, because he's actually uh, at the start. He act, there's actually a huge font <laughs> telling us what weight it was. It's like giant. Oh, I totally fast forward. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was wondering if you were just being sarcastic then. Huh? <laughs> See, that's, that's what you get. Mm -hmm. Alex, I think you've seen more reps than me because you fast forwarded, so you can go first. 
<laughs> um, oh my God, let me let me look at it one more time. Yeah. So, so my I, first thoughts is, you know, this is a relatively rushed back extension. So you're more kind of like I'll call it like hunching into it or rocking back into it rather than actually extending your back. Um, so what our goal is, you know, when we say, you know, freeze your hips in space, your hips don't move past that point. You're not moving the bar forward or backwards is that your hips stay where they are and your spine gets longer around your hips. So you're trying to push your stomach down, squeeze your chest up, get everything nice and straight. Um, if you're going to set your back and then what's happening is that, you know, your torso is relatively flat and it all just rocks backwards and kind of bunches up and together and actually becomes a little bit more rounded, you're not really extending your back at all. Um, if you're a giant strong man, a lot of times you can get away with that as kind of the way that you pull out the ground off the bar. Um, but having your spine be straight and extended tends to be a little bit more productive over time. Um, and for most people, it's definitely significantly more efficient. So think about extending your back, making your spine straight rather than rocking back onto your heels before you pull it off the ground. Yeah, I think the heels piece is what I was trying to find. Um, the do you reckon he's starting right over the middle foot? Um, as much as it needs to, because it's coming off the ground. So. Well, that's true. It's yeah, I think I think it's a little bit of an I'm artifact. Seeing. Yeah, I definitely see some swing. I think it's an that's artifact of him learning to pull behind the bar. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think he's starting a little behind mid foot. That's what I was trying to look at. Mm -hmm. It could yeah, also. Per be I was going to say, personally, if I ever screw up a deadlift and I pull on my heels and pull myself behind the bar, it's increased in difficulty, like, tremendously. I don't know oh, how people no. do it every single it time. Good. It feels crazy for me. Yeah, yeah. It feels really horrible, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Yep, yep, yep. A couple questions in the comments. Uh, Ahmed, Sheik Ahmed said, thank you. Okay, thanks, Norris Ahmed. Um, that is not a Oh, this, he's asked a question which is probably going to take a while to answer, but let's see if we can do it in under a minute. Um, he's asked, what's linear progression in a nutshell? What to remember if you are progressing slowly? <laughs> yeah, answer that in a minute. No. <laughs> um, all right, I got this. I got Go this. for it. Okay. Uh, little weight each time, do more, big weight. If slow, eat food, sleep more. Change program when hard, day over day over day. Hey, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I got to say, I don't know if I can do better than that. That's really, <laughs> good. That's really damn good. Yeah, I, I'd say if you if you do nine hard sessions in a row where you think they're, they're limit grinders, that's the point where you're like, oh, this is probably the end. You know, you can, you'll be able to tell if the bar speed's getting slow. Uh, Ahmed, I, based off the videos that we've seen so far, you're, you still have another month and a half in you. Easy. Yeah. I might mm -hmm. I might stop a little earlier, but I also work with most older people, and I gotta kind of shallow them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good kind of contrast because I I tend to work with a lot of younger folks and with a lot of yeah. athletes. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'll I'll beat people up for fun, but um, yeah, if you work with masters populations, be careful. Yep. Yeah, really, 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 really. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Daniel Duenas, um, I haven't finished reading Starting Strength yet. Maybe we should just leave the comment there. <laughs> yeah, he really knows nothing. I mean, it, it's it's amazing just how. Did I tell you guys I got told to read the book once on the Facebook page? Really? That's it was, awesome. Nice. It was it was really incredible. I I, mm -hmm. I felt honored. I really did. By but, another coach. But, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. But no, no. It's amazing how many read the book, not an SSC comments there are on uh, on social media. Yeah. Anyway, he's asked. Oh, we have answered this question before. But he said, but what point do you recommend adding chin ups and cleans? I don't know, I chin think, ups immediately if you can. You know, yeah, you chin ups immediately, and if you can't add lat pull ups or lat pull downs, yeah, lat pulls, they're lat so low cost. Yeah, yeah. It, you can and, do that every single session, and it's not going to stop you. Yeah, unless you're the most high speed executive in the world, and you can't spare literally ten minutes. Right. You know, right. Skip right. It, if but. you're and and if you're doing that, you're not you're not doing linear progression. So you know exactly. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um. Okay, morning. Uh, this is Travis Reed. Morning, fellas. I'm a bit late to the party today. Unbelievably, my job is getting in the way of watching strength training tips on YouTube. No, no. It's a shame. You gotta quit. You need to reorganize your priorities. Do. Yeah, you have to become a niche online barbell cult leader or <laughs> really? acolyte. Yeah, that's what you gotta do. It's worked so well for us in our <laughs> in our man. Yeah. Uh, Braden Wilson from before. He said thanks for the advice, guys. Super helpful. 
Um, Ahmed, Sheik Ahmed, my chin-ups goal is 12 by 3. I am at 6 by 3 now. Any tips? Um, yeah, do more than three sets. Yeah. 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 That's it. It's just it's just going to take time. Um, if you're trying to do a lot of chin-ups uh, and, it's and just, you want to expedite it, I would say grease the groove. You know, do a lot of sets of between like three to five chin-ups, maybe like upwards of 10 to 15 sets if you can get away with it, if you have the time. Just put it in between all of your lifts. Um, you'll notice your ability to do chin-ups dramatically improves. You're just going to get more efficient at it, go a lot easier. You'd likely push it up. Um, the next thing would just be to add weight to it. You know, um, yeah, some people are some people are weird. And like even if they have like 100 pounds for five, they'll do like nine for body weight and be done. <laughs> So that's the situation where you're going to have to, you know, start increasing the total volume rather than just the weight. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say in addition to that, if if it really is that much of a priority to it to, to you, think about doing it as an earlier portion of the of the workout on uh, your light squat days or something like that. Because mm -hmm. if, if you're if you're pushing chin ups over everything else, then and that's a real goal for you for whatever reason that would be. Then bringing them earlier and earlier up on one of your workout days will give you more gas in the tank to do so. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. There you go, Ahmed. Um, next video, RN Vol 18. And it's 105. Hey. That's what he yeah, said. It's 105, like guys. I didn't, get I didn't expect him to talk. That was a little startling. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, break the fourth wall. <laughs> Yeah, he's really just. Um, I mean, these look pretty good. Uh, the only thing I don't, I don't like is he's kind of relaxing into the bottom. Um, one of my clients calls calls that plotzing. Um, mm. so oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to see him keep keep tension. Were you listening to that with sound after he started talking? Uh, me? No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's he is exhaling. He is literally. It's funny you said that. He is literally plotzing. He is. Peaking his exhale right at the bottom to. Oh, he know, is. Oh, back wow. up. Yes. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't aware, go look up some motivational Tom Platt's videos on YouTube. Amazing. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Quads That's until next incredible. week. Incredible. Oh my um, god. What a man. But yeah. So so ideally, you're holding your breath any time that you're moving. You know. So we consider the bottom any time you're still moving. But if you're at the top, you're just hanging out there. That's fine. Take a nice big breath in. Um, but during the ascent, or excuse me, the descent, the bottom, or the ascent, you are clamping down on that breath of air that you've taken as hard as you can. Um, that will sort out a lot of the errors here. It'll probably introduce a little bit of a better pacing. Um, you don't want to go slow, slow, fast into your uh, into the bottom. You want to keep it in one controlled motion. You can give it a little bit of extra gas at the bottom to help the uh, help pop it out. But that's normally whenever you're pretty mature. I, I wouldn't say try and speed it up right at the hole if you're relatively new. If this is 105, you know, I feel like you could have squatted this for 20 RN yeah. volume eight, uh, volume 18. But um, I would, I would be yelling. Yeah, that's true. This is super mm -hmm. light, but um, yeah. I would be yelling at you to slow down right now and, uh, and keep tension through the entire lift. Keep the mm -hmm. tempo the exact same through the entire uh, descent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Take some 10 pound jumps for a while, man. Yeah. Yeah. This is also really light. Um, <clears throat> wrist position. Well, yeah, it's the thing that we have to focus on. That's really all the starting strength platform exam is, is they just show you a bunch of lifters. Yep, yep, yep. And you it's identify really if their wrists the are dead or not. Thing to, yeah. uh, to, to a good squat. Mm -hmm. um, um, do you think adding weight is going to sort out the, I mean, there's a few of those reps where his, his heels seem to come off the floor. Is, is adding weight going to solve that issue or is there any other technique? Things Descending more slowly will. Yep. Descending mm -hmm. with more control is going to is going to totally eliminate that. So it's not yeah. really a big deal. Cool. Descending more slowly will. And generally people have like, a, unless they are just a, a dud, a potato, motor moron, whatever you want to call them, the instinct of self-preservation with a heavier weight will help people do a better job. Yep. <laughs> Yep. You know, and that's, so if we put it's, 225 on, he could likely move it around for probably maybe two or three reps. And, you know, I bet you those reps would be a lot cleaner. So, And it's it's so important to say that because, like, we're not just telling you to load weight because we want you to injure yourself or something like that. Or we're just reckless with your joints and ligaments and all. We just can't. There's a limit to how much a coach can say about your movement without an ample amount of weight on the bar because the mistakes you could fix a thousand mistakes with the empty bar and then put 150 pounds on it and a whole new host of mistakes cropped up that you didn't know mm -hmm. about 
Yeah, and it is not because you don't have the strength to move that plus 150 pounds weight. You know, it's just because the technique was never really there. So, right, because you didn't. You, you while you might have learned how to do it properly, you didn't learn how to do it properly under stress. Mm -hmm. Yes, very, very much so. A um, couple more comments. Ron Norman, I think that was probably who we just looked at, said, thanks for the advice. No worries. Ron. Oh, nice. Ron Norman. Okay. Yes. That makes much more sense than your first RN. name being RN. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Steve A. Rogers, thanks for the feedback, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Braden Wilson from before, um, he said, the prep course is good. I think it falls in line with Alex K's advice on being precise with the specific language and info that SS has already given. A mentor is great because my mistakes are fixed in a snap. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Yeah, that was a good starting strength plug. I liked it. That was the ideal response. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, next video we have P. Uh, is it P. Keen up next? Yeah. Peter Keen. Yeah. P. Keen. If this your name's not is... Peter, sorry. Uh, I think it's Pat. Pat. Damn. All right. So he said deadlift 165 pounds. Older trainee trying to get some strength back after a long layoff. And this is uh, in slow-mo. It is in slow-mo. <laughs> <laughs> slow or this is a did. tempo deadlift. <laughs> yes. An incredibly good tempo deadlift. In that case, I mean, this wow. guy has not walked for about three weeks after this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Can I speed oh, this up? Wow. In the yeah. settings? Can we have... I don't think I can. I'm going to take it to two times speed and see if it's normal. It's not. Nah. Four times speed looks normal. If you can take it to four. I can't. I'm, I'm just fast forwarding. Like, I'm just okay. like grabbing, literally scrubbing through. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to really do it. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, this is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, you're, you're just not quite. I would re recommend to this person that they go look at the uh, start, starting strength five step setup because um, the hips are dropping way too low. Primarily because the bar is way too forward. It's not over midfoot. It's over your toes. and uh, Or does he move it through the... Yeah, yeah. It's just set up way too forward. And uh, your back angle is way too vertical at the beginning, which is why your hips are shooting up through the lift. And, you know, setting up properly using that five-step setup is going to fix probably all of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially what our goal is, is, you know, we want to push the hips up relatively dramatically to the point where they need to get to on a heavy pull. You're going to notice like an active tension in your hamstrings. You're going to have to use your knees to push your hips up in the air. And then you're going to pull your shoulders up around those hips. So your hips really aren't going to move once the bar starts moving. Your shoulders are going to move around it. Um, it's going to look uh, a lot shorter than this. It's going to feel shorter because you're going to have to do less of a hip motion down and then chest up and then hips up and then chest up again. Um, so it should feel, if you're, if you're doing it correctly, it should feel like a relatively short mechanical pull. It's it's gonna feel like it's gonna feel like you tr you're trapped in a pressure cooker at the bottom, but the pull is actually gonna be a lot easier. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks, Pat. Uh, up next, we have Philly S fourteen. Uh, he says he's forty one, six three, two fifteen, trained for a year. He's uh, plateaued. He said he's plateaued words uh, for three months on deadlift while getting strong in his other lifts. He says doesn't feel efficient in his lift and not sure if his timing is good or if he's engaging all his muscle groups at the appropriate times. Interesting. Okay. Mm. <laughs> An interesting way to put that. You want to take yeah. this one? Okay? Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he could reverse curl this to his chest. Dude, yeah, I'm pretty like sure he is it. reverse curling it to his chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so I think Philly... Yeah, I think Phillies fan 14. Um, yeah, I think with this one, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a perception thing. Um, if you think, if, if this is one of your heavy deadlift sets, you would be able to add, with correct in-person coaching, probably 50 pounds to this pole, you know, at the correct hip height on the same day. So if you think that this is one of your heavy working sets, you may have sent us like a back off set possibly. Um, but if this is, if you think this is one of your heavy sets, it, it is not. It is not. Yeah, and I I think it's really important to note the reason why it feels so heavy is because you're trying to pick it up with your biceps. You're mm -hmm. you know if you if you if you put that in your fingers, you straighten your arms out so that they're they're like rope. They're just attaching you to the bar. 
you get your hip position a little higher, you pull pull the bar back a little further, and you look up and squeeze your back tight instead of relying on just dropping your hips to set your back um, and really focus on that spinal extension. If you do that and then you push the ground away and you sort of let your back be the lever that, that picks the bar up, this is going to feel like nothing. It's going to feel yeah. like, like there's nothing on the bar. Mm -hmm. and like this this problem can crop up for a lot of people like you know i took probably about like a month and a half of a deadlifting uh just i I'd focus on some sports i came back to it i was pulling like 365 and i was like why does this feel so goddamn heavy and i was watching the videos and i actively was curling the bar i had yeah. like an inch and a half of arm bend in both yeah and i was like oh yeah. okay that's why um so it can happen but uh one of the easiest fixes that i found for this online is just to have the person use straps Think about having the bar almost fall out of your hands with straps. You will not be able to curl it, you know. Um, well, that's true. So mm -hmm. get some straps on. Have them hang entirely on the strap for a while. You'll notice your arm will straighten out. Once your arm is straight, then you can focus on squeezing your chest up. Um, but similar advice uh, to Pat Keen behind us. Um, get your hips higher. Squeeze your chest up at the wall in front of you uh, in straight arms. And I think you'll be able to progress really quickly on this. So, Yeah. If you think about how you grab a chin-up bar... If you were just to like hang off of a chin up bar totally loose, that's really the same way you grab a bar for a deadlift. So that, you know, you, you shouldn't have any tension in your shoulder blades, no tension in your shoulders, no tension in all all of these joints are just relaxed. The only thing that's tense is you've got a tight armpit, right? So that your mm -hmm. lats are engaged and yeah. um, you know, everything else is just it's literally just attaching you to the bar. Good news, he probably has a really strong row. So hopefully that's going <laughs> well for you, Phillies. Yeah, yeah that absolutely. looked like a new exercise he invented right there. <laughs> uh, the road deadlift, yeah. yeah. The row lift. Um, all right, thanks very much, uh, Phil. Uh, up next, we've got Nick2000. And I think this might be his first workout. It is his first workout. So hopefully we'll be able to see what he's doing because this is hard to see. <laughs> I love this setup, though. Yeah, man, the shag carpet. Yeah, shag oh, carpet. Man. I love the light fixture and the drapes. Well, He's just can... in his grandma's house getting yeah. jacked. <laughs> well, I was about to with, say. A, with a full <laughs> smith. I think he has a full smith machine in his house. Yeah, man, yeah. that's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. That is pretty wild. Wow. Well, he definitely knows how to get his back into extension. That is for sure. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's a really good. That's a that's a good boon. Um, the the main thing that that he's doing is actually something you see with so many clients, which is when they bend down, they bend down to grab the bar and they bend their knees till the shins touch the bar before they actually grab onto the bar. That is so, so common. And it's, you know, it's, it's impossible to overstate how important it is to bow first, keep your knees straight, grab the bar, then bend the knees till the shins touch the bar. And, uh, and that'll, that'll fix a little bit of just the setup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the normally when I see that kind of overextension or just I want to say dramatic degrees of extension, I don't really see, like saying overextension. Um, but uh, whenever you see that, I found that's pretty self-organizing. As you get stronger, as you get a little bit more more meat on you, it's not really too big of an issue. Um, yeah, yeah. The only the times only... that I'll, I'll I'll go ahead. No, I bet you were going to say exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, so the only times that I'll move to correct that is if the person is having like an elevated difficulty perception of the pole because they're like trying to kill, they're trying to break their lower back in half. <laughs> they don't realize they don't really need to, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Actually, or whenever I did, the, I did the deadlift camp with Alex Beasley, she called me out on that because I was yep. just popping it out too hard. She was like, come on, yep. man. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. She, she actually called me out on, the, on that too and, and at one point in our coaching, in her coaching me. Uh, cause I was trying to do the exact same thing, but, um, I think it's pretty common when you, if you read this stuff and you, you really internalize it you try, 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 and you're like, I'm not getting enough. Um, the only time I'll point it out really is like you said, Alex K when it's affecting the lift or sometimes with female clients who are just starting out, they can feel some, some pain sensation there. If they're over, if they're, like you said, if there are some extreme degrees of, of extension and I'll, you know, just brace the abs a little more and, uh, that'll fix that pretty well mm -hmm. or be lazy yeah. with your back. That's another way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I overextend every single time. So I frankly think about like not really setting my back and just being a little yeah, down yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah, lazy about it. Because otherwise it's just, yeah. It's the exact mm -hmm. opposite yeah. problem that most people have. Yep. Yes. It is. Pretty good for a first workout though. Like first ever time yeah, lifting. Bad. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's obviously done a bit of research on it. And um, 
Good work, yeah. Nick. Also, eat some food, Nick, 2000. Eat some yeah, food. Really Get your grandma to really, you know, up the meatloaf. In the <laughs> yeah, you're at grandma's house already. She better have cookies, you know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm just hoping that she's jacked to hell. She's just doing 20s <laughs> well, of the, in the obviously, front squats. Dude, she's got machine. a whole gym in her, yeah. <laughs> her uh, apartment. I don't know. House? I, I think it's a house. Uh, a couple of comments. Oh. Travis Reed. I think he was talking about the lift from a couple of lifts ago, but he was talking about hips too low. It must have been uh, one of the previous ones. Thanks, Travis. Ron Norm. All of them. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> really like Three of the four deadlifts we've yeah. done. Uh, Ron Norman, as a person returning to lifting from a year off, how do you find the right weight to use for your workouts? I started really low, I think. Mm. Start out really low. Like the first, the very first, li- the very first workout you do, you're going to be sore as hell anyway, just by doing by virtue of doing two or three sets of five on the squats. So just you know, I mean, I I had a layoff, um, and my average squat is like three fifty, you know, three sixty five, that kind of thing. Um, for five and I started out at 185. So like, you know, re- really you can start start low and it's super easy to add 20, 30 pounds of workout if you started too low, but it's really damn hard to, you know, start way high and then, you know, grind yourself into a halt before you even start going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially if you've been doing like other training, you know? Um, so for, for me, I've just been doing like a bunch of accessory leg work for quite a while when I didn't have any, uh, current access to a gym. Um, so I was like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling strong as hell, you know, and I just go in, <laughs> try to set PRs. I mean, so like, yeah. it's flexi fun. there as well, buddy. <laughs> exactly. It's fun, but you do get very sore. It's very fun, but very sore. <laughs> so you have to, you have to wager that you have to, yeah. have to play yeah. that out. If that's, if that's demotivating to you, you might want to avoid it, but if that's motivating, go for it, man. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, Steve A. Rogers, what lifting straps do you guys like? Dominion mm-hmm. straight. Let two. It's just leather straps. It's a lot, nice long leather strap. I recommend them above anything else. How thick are those? They're uh, pretty thick. I don't know the exact like millimeter. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, they're okay. yeah they're they're they're. I've I've you know held five hundred in my hands and uh, no problem. So I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah, they're good. If- a few. I like to have ones that you can also use for, you know, cleaning or snatching if, if you need to. So have an open one. Don't do the one that, like, locks around your wrist. Um, but, like, the, the Iron Mind straps, I really like those. Uh, they're just a small self-contained loop that doesn't choke in on itself. Um, and then uh, Versa Grips as well. So if you're doing just a lot of other work and you're just only feeling your forearms and you're just getting a forearm pump whenever you're doing chin-ups and that's your limiting factor, uh, the Versa Grip does a really good job of, you know, helping people actually figure out how to do the movement correctly so or you could buy the official starting strength straps which you can get from uh, any car wreckage <laughs> car wreckage <laughs> players oh yeah he likes yeah. the uh, he the likes seat the seat belt. belts yeah everyone scalp some seat belts yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah oh that's funny uh, or just take the car live dangerously yeah mm-hmm. true uh <laughs> david mark is the low back position at the start of the deadlift more in extension than it is for the start of the squat no it's- I think it's he, do, does he mean the start of the squat as in the bottom? Or is he, do you think he would be comparing the bottom position of the squat as opposed to the deadlift? Yeah, I'm, I'm not uh, sure. That would make more sense to compare it, that. Yeah, it's a very strange question. Yes, because um, the top of the squat. <laughs> right, the, the start, start of the squat. squat. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's neutral either way. I mean, really, the, the, the lumbar, I, the ideal position anyway is a neutral lumbar spine. So um, you're not looking for hyper hyper extension or flexion either way mm-hmm. yep. all right there you go david uh so next one is mjdc and we'll do the 79 the one that ends in 79 he's got two videos so i think this oh is i have a uh, m sanford or no oh uh oh yeah i have m sanford, m. sanford. oh, and oh yeah you're right this. yeah sorry you're right it is M. There's, there's a lot going on with M. Sanford. Leave no man First behind. Man. Yeah. The man, the man's setup is badass. It is. I think, nice, I, think, yeah, I think Alex already watched this, so you go for it. <laughs> I, I, I did. Um, first of all, freaking awesome setup, dude. Uh, <laughs> really great. This, this rack is amazing. Um, I, there's a lot going on here. I would say the first things that uh, we might need to focus on is bar position in that it's not low enough on your back. Um, you look like you're kind of tight there anyway, so you might need to stretch out, but I don't think you don't look too old. So my guess is you'll be able to get down there just fine. If you stretch out, um, do we have like a, a video that we can link for the, 
the mobility stretch that uh, Reynolds and Ripito like. Oh, uh, the, the the Paul. Yeah, I think Paul Horn is a good one. Well, so you just Paul look up Horn, low bar stretch. I'm not. I'm not sure if he. I, I know he released a newer video, but I don't actually like pushing into it until there's pain. You know, there's that Paul Horn stretch where he's like push in, push in, push in, and then I saw uh, one of the seminars, one of the older seminars where Reynolds was in it, and he had the guy just come under, push in a little bit, come out, push in a little bit, come out, push in a little bit, and try to get an inch every time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found that works night and day. I mean, it's it's so much easier. You're not torturing your client. And it just released the you know the tissues release really quickly because it's on there a lot anyway. Um, but at any rate, you know get get some uh, stretch out there. Uh, another thing that could work for you is just hanging from that pull up bar you've got. Just, you know, prone hanging right here and really really dangle. Uh, that can loosen up the shoulders a little bit, and then narrow your stance. Um, and beyond that, you know we kind of have to put some weight on the bar in order to see what else is going to go wrong. Mm -hmm. I think the brace is really loose. Uh, My speculation on that is just because, you know, it's at a relatively constant speed and then you like pinch to a slowdown at the bottom. Normally I've found that's people trying to like collect themselves or brace into the correct tightness just all the way at the bottom of the squat. Do that at the top, you know, so clamp down in your abs, hold that tension the entire rep. But otherwise, man, this is pretty serious setup. So you got to add some weight to the bar, start doing some bodybuilding, eat some food. Blast some trend, you know. Yeah, man. You gotta yeah. go hard to make sure whatever you can get. Fill the rack out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is uh, those chinos he's lifting it as well are pretty impressive. They're they're not gonna last long. I can no, tell you. No, he's gonna bust I tear, through. I tear about one pair of pants every three months. Um, <laughs> Is that lifting related growing. or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> just in the in the fact that I'm that I'm squatting all the time and and de- demonstrating mm-hmm. to my clients if I'm not wearing sweatpants the the pants are and I've got a hype anyway. There's a lot of going on, but yeah, <laughs> yeah I tear about falling it off of his scooter and they just keep tearing. <laughs> yeah, clearly, obviously, that's yeah. what's going on. Mm-hmm. Too much rollerblading. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. uh, okay. Um, Tricky trick six nine six nine six nine says, "Yeah, boys, Monday morning, woot woot." You yeah, boys, <laughs> amazing. I, I love couldn't it. agree more. Yeah. All right, nice. Tricky6969, do the bodybuilding show with me in 2023. The preparation <laughs> starts now. <laughs> I think he's the only one who will take me up on the offer. So. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've got a former bodybuilder working for me right now, if you're, uh, if you're looking for something. <laughs> there you go. I'm looking for Alex Mitchell, actually. That's who I want. <laughs> oh, dude. we oh. got to get the Alex Mitchell... We gotta get the Al- all all the Alexes in prep at the same time. But I you, I'll tell you what, Kennedy is probably ready to go, and Beasley's not far off either. I think both of them could could definitely Stage crush a bodybuilding ready. show. They could crush a bodybuilding show with a little couple months prep. Uh, mm-hmm. Tricky Trick also said he's eating some eggs right now. He's in. So that, uh, there we go. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Ahmed <laughs> Sheik Ahmed says, "Do I need to eat some food too? Six foot one seventy five pounds." Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would seem ideal. Try to eat as much food as you can, okay. and you know, be conservative about your weight gain. Like if you, if you actively notice yourself getting past whatever your personal threshold for being too fat is, uh, there's no one's going to give you a pin or some sort of reward for pushing past that. You know, um, you'll have enough time to get strong. Uh, and if you're kind of like a master's athlete and it's like imperative for you, you know, let's say that you're having some sort of like accessory style of surgery in three months and you're like, I need to get strong, gain some weight before I have whatever operation. Sure. Gain body weight at kind of, you know, a slightly higher rate, but otherwise go at whatever pace you're comfortable with. You know, um, you should be able to get strong around whatever you're doing. I think, I think that's a really good point. You know, if you're, if you're in a position where, like you said, you're going towards surgery, or you're, you know, 71 years old or past 65 and, you know, a higher BMI is actually indicated, you know, that you might, you might want to go that route, but it, it really is a special population who really needs to gain weight at that clip. Otherwise, if you're just a 25 year old kid, I mean, for sure, eat your groceries, but there's no need to get fat in the pursuit of gains that would have happened anyway in a couple months, you know, after. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Riggins, tight shoulders lead to bicep irritation by chance in the squat. Um, sometimes I think that's just kind of I like know. an, Im- I, I mean, you've seen people without like, with, who didn't have tight shoulders get bicep irritation in the squat just cause they're not holding it very well. Um, I think it's a great problem. Yeah. 
it's a grip problem. It's a kind of a grip and a setup thing. You know, there's there's too many things that can irritate it. Um, but you know, make sure you're curling four times a week, doing chin ups twice a week. You should sort totally. it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, tricky trick six nine six nine six nine. <laughs> he said, "I'm on your September 13 show with some squat form checks, so you'll be able to see my beautiful bodybuilding butt cheeks." Oh, amazing! I'll mark the bodybuilding butt cheeks. Yeah, I'm looking, looking forward I am to that. Excited. Very Can excited. I please come on? That would be great. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, M Sanford, we're going to look at the one that ends in 59. So MJ, sorry, MJDC, and the one that ends in 59. MJDC59. Okay. Yeah. He's got two videos, but I think we'll um, only look at one of them today because uh, we'll do yeah. so many to get through. Yeah, we do. That's a great mask he's got. Jeez, what was that? That was uh, all sorts of things going nice. on there. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's got... I'll let you take this one, Kay. Uh, I love the shoes, first of all. Oh, I don't see Love the, the shoes. Wait. You can see him in the walkout, but we got some vibrams going yeah, on. Yeah, we got some vibrams going on. <laughs> oh, rad. Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm through rep two. Past <laughs> this. Um, yeah, this seems super light for you, MJDC. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to make an attempt at what that name is going to be. Uh, but, yeah, I would say add some weight to this. You know, it's kind of been the same issue. I think Alex and I, the first time that Al, uh, Mitchell was on, we talked about this problem at length for a little bit. But it's, you know, we talked about it last time, too. Um, this is a little bit too light for you. Uh, next issue is that your hands, I don't know if they actually need to be that wide. You are swooping under the bar at that width without, you know, any sort of, it doesn't really seem that you actively have to think about that. So start moving those in an inch each set, you know, just to fingers width, just try and take what one you can, get that a little bit tighter. Um and I think a lot of these problems would be sorted out with weight on the bar. You know, you're getting to depth. The hip drive is showing up when it needs to. You're, you know, you're trying to accelerate the bar. Um, I can't hear you rebracing, so make sure in between each rep you're taking a big intentional brace, locking down on it. Yeah, he does I say um, bar oh. a little low as well. I think it's actually a little low. It could just be the angle. It's possible to tell the angle, but it looks mm-hmm. like it scoots back every time. Yeah, it definitely. Scoots back every time he locks out. I don't know if that's locking out the wall. That's with his Hey Alex Alex Mitchell, your mic's breaking up. I'm not sure if you're covering it or something. Oh my apologies. There you go, that's um, better. Yep. Um, so this guy actually left a comment uh, and said that he's it's his first workout in five months and he's a recovering crossfitter. So nice. That could explain <laughs> Most of what's going on in that video. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, thanks very much, Matt. We'll get on to your other video next week just because we've got so many to get on to. Um, oh, our old friend Jordan Froughton, I think he's up next, is it? Oh, no, sorry. We've got um, uh, Melanie. Have... Melanie. Melanie, yeah. Yeah, Melanie mm-hmm. Sitnik. And, Melanie and, Sitnik. And the and Ripito in the background. Yeah. <laughs> It's so creepy. Okay. Uh, Listen. What is strength? What is strength? (laughs) What is strength? Strength is production of force against an external resistance. What is strength? What is strength? How do you incrementally increase strength? What is strength? Who the hell knows? Really? Who 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 really knows? That's what the barbell is for. All we do is add weight to a movement pattern. Put it together. Mm Hmm. It's all arbitrary in the day. Um, all right, do you want to take this one, Alex? Oh, I was listening to Rip Tell, my apologies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was too. The focus needs to get you need to pull it back to the lifter. It's just captivating, right? Um, I, I think these, these are, I mean, really good. I would like to see a bigger brace in the abs. Um, other than that, I really don't have a lot to complain. Um, I think the forearms are tilted out a little bit too much. I think, you know, they could move in slightly. I mean, like I personally really like to, if you, if it doesn't beat your elbows up for some people, it chews them up in you know, a few weeks of doing it, or even if you don't have the time to adapt through it, but you know, having your, uh, forearms stacked 
directly on top of your upper arm. That way you can get your bounce off of all the meat that you've established there. And then having that on top of the shoulder, it can kind of create a, a, just a huge platform for a spring, even if you aren't using a hip press, even if you aren't throwing your hips forward. Um, yeah. For the people who are, you know, built in the correct way to get their bar right into that front rack position without too much fuss, I think the Olympic press is a really good option, you know. So maybe try that out, Melanie. Um, I think, uh, I think you, Mitchell, you recommended the uh, the Reynolds video for that. Yeah, yeah. For the he Olympic does, press he does a really good job. But I love the – I think you should watch both that and the uh, – what is it? Tommy Suggs takes yeah, the the Suggs. on a starting streak. But I think you should watch both of them. Because yeah, there's not a out. lot of videos on it anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, um, I think you're yeah, a really you, good candidate for it because you're already in that position. So That's a gr- really great point. Yeah, I would agree wholeheartedly. All right. Thanks a lot, Melanie. Appreciate the videos. Um, we have Lee R. next, deadlift. Lear. Lear. Lee is my old gym buddy from years ago. Oh, Oh, is he strapping up? This is this is one of yours, Kay. <laughs> okay. I can see um, he's working on the arm. I'm just at rep one. I'm just at rep one. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate the tricep mass, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a this is another case, you know, of people just kind of like, oh, he's mid strapping, mid set, so he's doing. Oh wow, this I is don't, amazing. I don't... I don't hate that actually. I I like it. You know, he gets as much volume as in, in as he can for the grip, and then I don't hate that. <laughs> I can tell you right now, Man. Lee has the smallest thumbs. Uh, they're like little oh, pinkies. Oh, oh, let's 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 get the get the ruler out and measure. <laughs> Everybody show off your deformed midget thumbs. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just. Uh, um, just but, uh, yeah, so, Lee, this is, uh, I, I want to say it was probably five or six videos back, but this is kind of rushing your setup. You are punching into it. You are just kind of, like, popping into a brace rather than extending. There are two discrete steps, okay? So they are not the same thing at all. You can extend your back without being braced, and you can brace without extending your back. You are just doing the bracing part. Um, you'll probably, I mean, you're just a young, strong dude. You're probably able to, you know, pull some mileage out of this kind of rounded back form probably more than you think. Um, is it going to be as comfortable or as sustainable as, you know, actually extending your back? Definitely not. Um, you know, so get your shins in position, get your hips in position. And like we were saying before, think about making your spine long and straight around your hips rather than just popping into it immediately. Um, and you'll notice, you know, more of the force that you're outputting is going to get to the bar that way. So yeah, keep, keep your hips high and turn your back into a soup bowl, you know, turn your back into a valley where your hips and your shoulders are the mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know, yeah. Speaking from, uh, you know, I've watched a lot of Lee's deadlifts. He can actually really get his back into extension. I mean, I think probably... If like, he tries. Yeah, if, well, I mean, he can do it naturally. I think he... Um, but I think he had some issues um, doing it that way, so... Mm-hmm. I'd be interested. I think he has a... I, th- I, I would like to see Lee sumo. I think he'd be a good sumo puller for some reason. Oh, really? Spidey senses are telling me. Yeah. <laughs> If you don't like extending your back very much, and you but you can get it into extension, just throw your legs out. <laughs> Basically, have it as vertical as you can right from the get go. So, speaking of splitting pants, I think Lee's actually got a story where he got excited about learning how to sumo deadlift at work, and he went into the bathrooms to. Uh, I'm not sure he'd be telling the story to be honest, but uh, <laughs> he, he ended up going to the bathroom to practice his sumo stance and. Uh, Ended up like splitting, do. splitting his suit pants mm. and uh, ended up having to change into his uh, workout shorts for the rest of the day <laughs> at the office. Amazing. So. <laughs> yep. yeah. Been there, Lee. Been there, Lee. Solidarity. <laughs> we all know that, yeah. Dane. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, Lee. Thanks for that. Uh, we have... Who's up next? Oh, Jordan Froughton. Oh, man. These are some oh, yeah. Gorgeous. Jordan. He's a strong fella, Jordan. What a great setup, too. Oh man, I'm jealous. Uh, he said it's supposed to be five at four forty. Lost it halfway up on the fifth. Yeah, it looks like I think this is, is, is a grip good. issue. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's a grip. I issue. really like whenever we see the same thing at the same exact time, Alex. Yeah, it warms my heart. Really, good. <laughs> really nice. It means we're not we're not all just you know making this up. Yeah. Yep. There's an amount of consistency. So. Yep. 
Yeah, man. It's totally a grip issue. Uh, maybe hook, maybe straps. This will go up just fine, though. I mean, you're so strong. You can get this, no problem. Yeah, make sure you're using chalk. That could be a silly thing to say to you. But, you know, if you aren't, make sure you are. I know a lot of people yeah, just, really. like, don't for some weird reason. Um, but, uh, yeah, make sure you're chalking it up. Um, I've seen I've seen a lot of people just kind of being like, oh, you know, only if I need it. And then they'll kind of whiff their top set, you know, and then expect them to think about it beforehand. Um, you know, I chalk up for everything for 135. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Yeah, hundred percent. Especially because the cal, it, it helps so much with callus formation. I mean, I I show my hands to every client because you know I get old people who are worried about getting calluses on their hands, and I have none. I have no visible calluses because I chalk up all the time. And you grab the bar right, and there's no problem. Mhm. Yep. All right, Jordan. We're always just jealous of his lifts on this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. this is like super duper. It's one of those things where you know. We could only really help with programming. These are these are going to move for you. You're a big, strong guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The grip is the limiting factor here. Nothing else. Yeah. Uh, a couple of comments, Melanie, Sitnik, appreciated. Thank you, Alex and Alex. Mm-hmm. David, Mark. Most of the squatters we have looked at today have descended fairly quickly. Do you have a general recommendation on descent speed? No, because it's it's mm-hmm. so up to I don't anyway because it's so up to the lifter. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's as fast as you can descend, or as fast or as slow as you need to descend in order to descend under control. And that's really the limiting factor. Yeah, you, you'll you'll meet people, if you're, if you're more on the athletic side, you'll be able to descend very quickly while still controlling the load, and you should be able to turn it around really at any point. You know? yep. um, you'll see those people, and you'll be like, oh, it seems like this guy's descending too fast. They're not. Um, the descent speed is one of those things where, you know, I think novice coaches will focus on it a little bit too much, um, but only do it if it's causing other down chain problems. Only start right. messing with it. You know, people will self-organize into whatever descent speed they're the most comfortable with and whatever they're the most comfortable with generally is what produces the best squat. Yep. You know? yep. If you have someone That's who's going right. overly slow for some, you know, crazy God for second reason, maybe speed them up, but it's, it's really rare. No one but wants even to then, squat it's exactly what to. you said. It's exactly what you said Thanks before, so. which is when it's causing other downstream problems, like they're having trouble adding weight because they're just going so goddamn slow. Yeah. And then you, you know, you're doing your tempo squats every Monday, right. Wednesday, Friday. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and I mean, hey, hypertrophy work, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's all we need. Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, thanks for the question, David. L deadlift, our old friend. Mm -hmm. I I have so much sympathy for this setup because (laughs) while my gym was being built, I was working out in a, uh, in a uh, building with a 40 year old hardwood floor over a crawl space. And I had to deadlift like exactly like this, the same Titan pads. Everything is exactly the same. That's a pretty impressive little platform. She's built herself there. It is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's great. I use stall mat. Same thing. I mean, you would have had to stack up a few, though. That would have been... Oh, yeah. You know, like, I used a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing L watched, uh, saw the lifting in barefoot is gross video after submitting this. <laughs> <laughs> it is her own platform, though, so, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, it's a home gym. Yeah, it's a home gym. Yeah, man. when I had a home gym, yeah, I squatted in my underwear. You do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. You live, Who you the live hell your cares? Freedom. Exactly. Yeah. Or own your gym. Another thing you do. Um, there you go. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what I do. Uh, narrow your stance a little, L. Um, the stance is kind of wide. And you don't seem to really need it. Uh, you can also focus a lot better on your um, upper back extension. Same thing we've been saying in the past. I think that if you, specifically your upper back, though, I know we've been talking a lot about the lower back, but if you if you try to push your sternum up to the wall in front of you, push your chest up, 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 uh, while you're trying to set your back at the beginning of this lift, uh, it'll probably create a lot more extension throughout the entire spine and you'll be good to go. Mm-hmm. I think this is, this is a similar case to the Jordan Froten situation. I think this is actually just a little bit too heavy in the arms right now. Oh, you, yeah, that's true. I didn't even see that. Yeah, that's exactly mm-hmm. right. It's coming out at the top on the grip. You know, yeah. I would move yeah. to a mixed grip if you're double overing it, if you're hook gripping, you know, try your best or switch to straps. So, Try harder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you yeah. think it's coming out of the hands a little bit? I think it's. Well, you're, well I, I th- I'm seeing the pinkies open pretty severely, and there's, you know, normally whenever That's I true. know that instability at the top position, it's almost, you know, the hands are failing more than anything else. So. That could be it. That could be it. She's also getting mm-hmm. a little bicep with it at the beginning, get a little um uh, mm-hmm. at the beginning, but that could yeah. be a say another factor of the grip. 
I find that a lot of times I have really tiny hands. So um, I find that a lot of times you don't think about grabbing the bar and even just telling your lifter, a lifter who has a grip problem, to, to think about grabbing the bar as tight as they can can get you a couple more weeks of progression without having to go forward into straps or anything like that. So mm-hmm. that might be here. Okay. No worries. There you go, L. Uh, Jordan Froughton from before uh, asked, straps for everything other than a 1RM? Um, are you trying to compete? You know, that's kind of the question. Are you just trying to be yeah. a strong dude? Like, I, I think people think that, you know, the grip isn't trained when you're using straps. If you are very technical at using straps, it's not really trained that much. But most people are still squeezing the deadlift as hard as they can in the double overhand configuration while using straps. Right. Um, so if you're using strong many thing exactly yeah. so well, if you're doing figure eights and your fingers really aren't on the bar they're over the straps you know and it's just locked onto your wrist bones maybe you know that that'd probably be a detriment to your grip strength but i don't really have anything else against you know strapping your top sets um so not to mention if you're chinning regularly like your grip is getting plenty of volume mm-hmm. yeah I don't know. Jordan's a pretty big guy to be chinning regularly. I would be amazing to see him flying around I, doing some but, bar star but, stuff. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be badass if he was? Let's yes, do it, yeah. man. I Let's can only hope. Let's get five chin-ups. That would be magical. Mm-hmm. He left another and comment. And your grip's no problem. He's left another comment saying small hand club. So uh, Small hand club. Yo, <laughs> yo I'm telling you. Uh, the struggle uh, is real. Yeah. He says he does a lot of chins. So uh, Good. I good, guess. good, good. Start waiting, them, man. Your grip will Impressive. sort itself out. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, Edwin Bench, our old friend Edwin from uh, Taiwan. In a in a full Captain America yeah. gym outfit. This is awesome. Had the coolest gym outfits. I feel like this. <laughs> Bench is pretty good. Um, I wish I could get that part. Yeah, I think this is these are these are totally fine. You know, if you're trying to learn the heave, now would be a good time too. I think you're built pretty well for it. Um, yep. You know, but otherwise, I don't I don't really have too many complaints about this. I'm uh, to just because of what you're saying, I'm going to nitpick here and say I want to see more toe contact onto the ground. I want to see you really dig your toes into the ground when you're pushing. I'm not saying get up on your toes, keep your full feet, foot flat on the ground. But you want to kind of shear the the ground more than you're pressing into the ground, because um, the goal is to push the butt back off, back the bench up toward your shoulders, not push the butt up off the bench, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like if you're if you're just sitting in an office chair or a rolling chair, think about sliding yourself backwards, pushing yourself yep. backwards with that. Chair. That's a really good. That's right. I'm going to steal that from you. Mm-hmm. Just pour one out for me whenever you just a little. Oh, I will every single <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <laughs> just Take on your shot. own gym floor, just yep. a protein shake, just on the ground. In the middle of a client session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jordan Froughton from before said he got fourteen chins at two thirty-five the other day. Nice man. Oh just my keep God. living the keep living the dream. Uh, I'll jo- join us for the bodybuilding show in twenty twenty-three. <laughs> Blows out of the water. <laughs> Please just. Can I have some? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, last video. Uh, C. Capella. Chris Capella. Um, he says he's new to the program, been over a year since going to the gym. Sure, I have lots of bad habits, unsure of wrists and grip. I don't really have a lot of problems with the wrist and grip right now. It looks a little loose on the back, but... I'm only watching the first rep, so it could deteriorate. Mm-hmm. I just finished rep one, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, Capella. See if you have an in-person coach near you. They'd be able to get this sorted out pretty quickly. Um, yeah. It may be annoying to do this online, or it may just take longer than you'd like it to. Um, the stance is definitely really narrow. The heels are coming off the ground. Squat shoes would help a lot. Um, I would recommend something with maybe a little bit of a higher heel than the standard. Um widen the stance up i would say probably about like four inches total and then see what that does for your depth that could just solve it you know yeah. you could just be done and then you just start focusing on you know having fun with it and adding weight um but it could not i'm not sure so yep very wholeheartedly okay um mm-hmm. anything else for for chris 
Um, yeah, I'm, I see if you can wind up those stands. I really, I've always found walking out between squat stands like that really annoying, you know, just because of the, you kind of have to navigate in and around them. Um, see if you can wind that up, you know, otherwise, just try your best, man. Yeah. It seems like you won't be able to overhead press in that basement either, so you may have just lugged those things outside every time you do that. Yeah. That would not be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, well, hey, we got through it. Um, yeah, we did. Hey, just just over that. an hour, I thought, well, I thought we were going to struggle today, but there you go. Um, so, Alex Mitchell, where can people find you if they want to get some online coaching or visit your gym? Um, so I do online coaching through Barbell Logic Online Coaching, and uh, if you want to visit me at my gym, I'm at Stronger Now. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook at Stronger Now Gym, and you can visit my website at StrongerNowGym.com. Awesome. Um, other than that, yeah, that's everything I got. Thanks for your time, Alex. That was and super polished. Was it. how polished was that, Alex Coseri? Yeah. You're gonna have to mm-hmm. beat that now. Totally ad libbed, man. Totally ad libbed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, don't, don't hire me. Hire Alex Mitchell. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you're on the, you're on the uh, neg, the neg approach. Like under 30, if you're under 30, seriously, go to K. <laughs> like, <you don't> want- <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I would say, I would say if you're an enthusiastic 40 or under, hit me up. We'll do a lot hey, of curls I'll together. Go. Let's um, go. If you're looking for exactly curls, yeah. I am not your man. <laughs> that's exactly it. Yeah, it's going to be six times a week for everybody mandatory. No, but uh, I do online coaching for uh, everybody and anybody. Um, you know, the the range of people who I've been working with, I would say, originally started with almost all athletes, and has you know since getting the SSC has flourished pretty greatly. Um, you know, so if you want to hang out and talk, uh, feel free to hit me up. We'll put a website link in the description below, um, and that should be it. Yeah, that's it. All right. Well. Um... Thanks very much, guys. Appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you all next week. Hey, thank you so much. All right, see you, boys. See ya. Peace.